This question states, for an element with sigma x equal to 100 megapascals, sigma y equal to minus 50 megapascals, and the other stress is equal to zero, what is the safety factor according to the criterion of maximum shear stress if the material has a yield strength of 200 megapascals? So the loading on the element is given by this 50 megapascals in compression on the top, and then given by, okay, hold on, there we go. Nope, we don't go, okay, yes. So 50 megapascals in compression, and then 100 megapascals in tension in the horizontal direction. And we're given that the yield strength is equal to, whoops, okay, interesting, is equal to 200 megapascals. Now, we're using the criterion of maximum shear stress. And so that means that the maximum shear stress that we're, we're looking at, so we often call that the shear strength and can be given by SSY, that's going to be half of the yield strength. And this comes from thinking about uniaxial loading of a bar where you have a given stress, let's call it sigma one, and we have the more circle that we can draw where we have the other stresses, sigma two, the other principal stresses, sigma two and sigma three are equal to zero. And then we have sigma one out here and the more circle has its center at sigma one over two, and more importantly, its radius, at least for our case, its radius, r, is equal to sigma one over two, and that radius tau max, well, let's say the SSY is equal to that radius, right? That's the absolute maximum shear stress. So if you had a bar under tension and it yielded at a particular specified yield strength of say 200 megapascals, the equivalent maximum or absolute maximum shear stress is going to be half of that. Now, there was a question that came up in class about, okay, sometimes maybe we're talking about shear stresses and we're doing maximum normal stress. Uh, sometimes we're talking about shear stresses and we're doing using yield strengths. Okay, so, um, for example, you could have been given that the uh, shear yield strength was 100 megapascals in this problem, and that would have been equivalent. Or maybe you're doing a maximum normal stress problem, that criteria, or that criterion, and you're trying to figure out, um, uh, is my maximum normal stress going to be above a certain threshold, but yet they don't give you, or I don't give you, the... Uh, the, the yield strength, I give you the shear yield strength. In that case, you'd have to multiply the shear yield strength by two to get the yield strength for then being able to do an accurate compare or a logical comparison, I guess you could say, between the maximum normal stresses that you have in your system and the maximum normal stresses that someone calculated or found when they were doing a, a, a tensile test. So the, the yield strength. Okay, well, that, that was maybe a little bit of an aside, but it, it's something that I think we, we talked about in, in class and maybe um, I, it deserved a, just a, a second of further clarification. For this problem, we uh, will now draw a more circle for the loading or more circles, right? So let's go ahead and draw the appropriate axes that we see there. And we're going to have a load out here at 100 megapascals. There's no, there's no shear stress on this element, so that means that we are in a state, for our intents and purposes, this is you know 2D, so sigma three would be equal to zero, but for our intents and purposes, because there's no yield, um, because there's no shear stress on the element, then we don't have uh, then, then we can say we have principal stresses, okay? 
that's the definition. And then, so there's one out there, so we'll say that sigma one is equal to 100 megapascals. And we'll say that sigma two, yes, I know, you're like, why is sigma three not less than sigma two? Well, that's just a lot of times how we, we think about things. And we've talked about this before, how often we assign zero to sigma three. So sigma two, this is sigma one out here. Sigma two is halfway. So we'll say, uh, that looks maybe halfish. All right, so that's gonna be the sigma two down here. Okay, and, uh, and so we can go ahead and draw a more circle or Muller's oval when I do things sometimes, or that's not even an oval or an ellipse. Anyway, so uh, this is, is a more circle. The sigma three is in the middle uh, at zero. So that means that we have these other more circles as well. We're using the criterion of maximum shear stress though. So we're gonna be interested in the maximum shear stress or the maximum shear stress which is equivalent uh, to or, or is part of an equivalency I guess you could say in this Morse circle. So where are we going to find the maximum uh, the absolute maximum shear stress? We're going to find it down here right? This is where it's going to be tau absolute max and what is that value? Well, that's going to be the radius of this Mohr circle. Huh. Not, I guess, when you're drawing is crummy. Sometimes things look a little crummy. So this is R, and that's describing the radius for this this outer Mohr circle. What's that radius? Well, we could say that two R is equal to the 100 minus the minus 50 or the minus the negative 50. So we have 200 is uh, 2 R is equal to 100 megapascals minus negative 50 megapascals. So that's going to be 150 megapascals and we have R then equal to 75 megapascals and the tau absolute max is equal to that 75 megapascals. What did we calculate for the shear strength of the material? Well, we calculated 100 megapascals. Okay. So this then means that if we, well, first, does it mean do we have failure or not? And the answer is no, because tau absolute max, right? So we have no failure because tau absolute max is less than the shear strength of the material. And the question is going further to ask us for a safety factor. Um, I'll just make that safety factor. Okay. So we need a safety factor. Well, what is the safety factor going to be? Well, the safety factor, right, is going to be uh, this this idea of whatever the tau uh, quote failure would be over the tau uh, operating I guess you could say I mean, this is one way to look at it and so for our problem that's going to be the tau the tau failure is just the the shear strength and the tau operating is what we calculated as our our absolute max. So that means that we have 100 over 75. And we're just keeping the units there, which of course will cancel out, which means that we have four thirds. That's our safety factor. And so we can say that the safety factor is 1.3 or 1.333, whatever we're getting. Okay. And that's how we do this problem. Thank you. I hope this example has been helpful.